And welcome to our service this week. I hope that you've all had a good peace-filled week and haven't got too wet. Today is Pentecost and we have reached the end of the Easter season. Today we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we think of gifts we perhaps think of birthdays or Christmas. When we send gifts to our loved ones. This is very similar. God sends his gift of the Holy Spirit out of his love for all of us. And Jane will be talking more about love later in the service. At the beginning of our reading today, we see the disciples gathered together in Jerusalem, hidden away, waiting for the coming of the one that Jesus had told them would be with them forever. However, they weren't entirely sure who or what exactly they were waiting for. We can probably relate to that expectant waiting. We have been waiting for an end to the lockdown restrictions, but we still don't know exactly what will happen at the end of the lockdown. How our lives will be changed from what we knew before the pandemic. What we do know is that God has a gift for all of us if we are willing to accept it. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. The spirit has come, alleluia. Christ says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. The Spirit has come. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, burning as fire, powerful as the wind. The Spirit has come. Alleluia.
The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. 
your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. This is the word of the Lord. So what a day it must have been on that first Pentecost. The disciples were all together in one house. They were not social distancing from each other, but they were social distancing from the powers that be, the authorities that have recently killed their leader. They were afraid because their own lives were in danger. They had been wounded and were afraid of being wounded more. Yet despite the threat to their lives, the disciples began to go out and tell people about Jesus. So what made them do such a dangerous thing? The story tells us that the Holy Spirit empowered them to share Jesus with others. If the events of that first Pentecost hadn't happened, we wouldn't be here today. Our church buildings wouldn't exist. Those of us worshipping together today in the name of Jesus are their legacy. We inherited their message, which on that first Pentecost was proclaimed in so many different languages, showing that the message is for absolutely everyone, that God loves all, welcomes all his children. His family is open to everybody without exception, no matter what language or ethnic or social background. But there exists in all of us, I think, the tendency not to include everyone. Even when we think we're doing a good job at being inclusive, the Black Lives Matters movement has taught me that we collude in power structures that create in and out groups. And we need to be willing to change by listening to those we exclude. To change, we need something stronger and more powerful than our own best intentions. We need God the Holy Spirit. God's love is the glue that binds us together. God's love is made known in Jesus who absorbed the destructive human cycle of responding to being wounded by wounding others in his suffering and death on the cross. And having absorbed the cycle of wounding others, he came back to life and gave his Holy Spirit so that the power to break the cycle of wounding resides in each one of us. It is often difficult to give up our power over others and to be truly reconciled. It's so hard that it's only God's power that can help us do it. Where is God? We see God every moment we are kind to each other. Every moment we forgive, we see and experience God and join in with God in breaking the cycle of wounding. We become empowered superheroes with a mission to transform the world. That mission will be our legacy to hand on to our children's children. When we blow into a bubble wand, we use the power of our breath, our life force, if you want, 
to create the bubbles. The bubbles then leave the bubble wand and rise up free, moving this way and that. As the bubbles rise, reflect on how you can courageously, joyfully and confidently pass on this legacy left to us. Dear Father God, thank you for the sacrifice of your son Jesus and thank you that he is always with us through the Holy Spirit. Thank you that because of your Holy Spirit we can thrive in all that we do. Thank you that we are beautifully and wonderfully made and that you love us equally. Thank you that because of the fruit of your Spirit we can care for everyone. We are sorry for the times when we have made the wrong choices and not listened to your Holy Spirit. We are also sorry for not letting the Holy Spirit guide us when we need it the most. Please help people who are struggling at this moment. We pray especially for everyone affected by the pandemic here and all over the world. Please comfort them through your Spirit. As we come out of lockdown and regulations, please help us understand more about what you want for us. We pray for your peace, love and joy over our families and our communities and also over our world. In Jesus' Jesus name, name, Amen. Thank you for joining us in our worship today. We look forward to being together again next Sunday. As we leave this service today, we pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us in our lives this coming week. Spirit of God, through the witness of our lives, standing in solidarity with all peoples, May we spread the warmth of your love, the light of your wisdom, and the fire of your justice, so that all may live in peace and security. Amen.